Hey, it's Mazzy here. I think on the last, my video vlog, uh, going from Seattle, San Francisco, back to San Francisco, I did this, and I think the namaste part, being a West Coaster, I should know this sort of namaste part. Uh, watch that video first. That is uh, a tour of me on my way to San Francisco, driving down from Seattle, stopping at rest stops, uh, showing some scenes within the beautiful uh, San Francisco, my uh, old hometown. Uh, wonderful city, has problems as uh, so many American cities have, uh, unfortunately, because of all the tech boom and et cetera, is out of a lot of people's reach right now as a livable city because it's so expensive and that breaks my heart. However, having said that, I have friends down there still and I still love visiting. And as you, uh, if you've seen that video, you'll see some of the beautiful, uh, fun areas of North Beach. It's got a vibrant scene of cafes and restaurants and bars. And uh, San Francisco has a handful of music uh, stores, record stores. I'd say Seattle probably has more stores. Uh, now, I did not go to every store in San Francisco. I went to four. Of course, Amoeba should be on everyone's list. Having said that, I don't think it's it's by far not the best store for used records. It's great for new records, great for CDs, new and used, for video, uh, for uh, books and things. Uh, uh, the records I picked up at these stores, and I'll, I'll do it by bags uh, of stores, but also, if you saw that video, I saw a couple of my friends, uh, Jashit Brooks, Ron was there, and a few, I saw other friends that were not uh, a part of the video. But I did go to North Beach to uh, the Gurren Brothers a hat store. Now, I'm not a shill for Gurren Brothers. I have about a dozen of their hats that I've, I've purchased over the years. I did not get freebies or anything else. Um, they are based in San Francisco, but they have st stores around the country. Unfortunately, several of them have closed during the pandemic. I heard um, that the store in Pasadena closed, the one in Seattle closed. And as I said in that video, I stopped buying hats online because as great as they look online, they never fit me. And people have asked me, where do you get your hats? This is one I've been wearing lately quite a bit. This is a Gordon Brothers. Um, I wear a seven and a quarter medium. Depends. Uh, and I really like this felt hat. It's a kind of good spring summer hat. But um, I did buy two hats, one of which I tried to buy again during the pandemic. Uh, and I got it and Unfortunately, it ran small, and that's really rare for me to have a, a hat like that that runs small. So, and that is a, um, that's this hat here, just to show you. This is actually a large, and I never, this is the one I ordered a medium, and, and this is a little more, you know, jazzy, mazzy <laughs> kind of look. But I think this is a great hat. Not, I don't feel it, I'm not feeling it right now in this moment, but um, depending on, you know, where you're going, what you're doing what you're spinning, what you live in. Uh, this is a different kind of hat, different, whole different look, different feel, jazzy hat. And the other one is one I have a different color on. Some of their uh, hats have different uh, names. It's called Dean the Butcher, Goren Brothers, Dean the Butcher. And I don't have a black one. And I kind of like the idea of having a, a I have a, a cac, a kind of a dark taupe uh, one, but I really like the style of this hat a lot. It's a little more, I look like a rabbi. It's a little more rabbinical. Now, some people like to put that thing down. I'm not a, that looks a little too, I don't know, not for me. <laughs> looks a little, little, I don't know what, like Italian or something. Not, there's anything wrong with being Italian, but I like this hat too. So there you go. So that's just uh, someone asked about to see my hat. So right now we're in springtime and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling this right now. So uh, there's from Gorn Brothers. You can go to their website, check them out if you like, if you're into hats. But again, try to um, try to tr try your hats wherever you buy your hats. I would say my recommendation is buy them in person because hats are very personal and the way they fit, the way they look. I brought this bag that I recently, I bought this in Seattle, but this is Selector. I think these are made out of, I think they're made out of Argentina. Uh, selector. I did not get this free. These run about $45. Now, people think $45 for a friggin' record bag. It's got a nice padding so it's secure. Zipper. It's got a side pouch. Uh, also, you can put 
I think up to 30 LPs in here. This is great for record shows and, and for record shopping. Now, um, a lot of times when I go, either I don't bring a bag or I used to bring the some of those free tote bags you get. And those tote bags to me are, are worthless. I have a bunch of them. And I mean, they're kind of good if you have like five or 10, maybe 12 records or something. But this is really nice and it really stores them well. There's Selector with a K. Um, I think they're available around this country, different places. I'm not sure, but I, I like this. It's the first time I brought it on the road with me because I really, I recently just got it at a uh, record store in uh, Seattle. But I, you can get them online about forty to forty five dollars, give or take. Different colors, black, like a green, gray. I think there's a red one, whatever. But um, again, I'm not shilling for them, but it's something I like, and uh, I'm not don't really show a lot of accessories around here now. Part of the reason I went to San Francisco, again, if you watch that video, I went to the Great American Music Hall. I timed it because I saw Ry Cooter, Taj Mahal, and Joaquin Cooter. And there is a clip in that last video, the San Francisco vlog, tour vlog, where I show the inside of the beautiful Great American Music Hall. I'm, I, I've seen over 500 shows there over the last 40 plus years. And it's a great, great, wonderful venue. In fact, I've seen Ry Cooter there many times. Uh, both his live records were recorded at the Great American Music Hall. And this is based on the Get On Board record that came out of Nonsuch that Ry Cooter did with Taj Mahal and Joaquin Cooter on percussion. And there's no footage of them because uh, they did not uh, allow the artist requested no cameras or, or, or video. And in a way, as much as, sure, I'd like to have it after the fact, but I kind of liked that people weren't, with their cameras up. Um, I've had a discussion about this recently, and if I could go back, if we could put time in a bottle, is that Jim Croce? If we could go back, I wish this whole, like everyone bringing cameras and it's, it's a distraction. Now, do I do it? Yes, but I still think it's a distraction. Kind of like the internet. As much as we love the internet, I mean, I, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the, and I wouldn't be here for you if it wasn't for the internet. Anyway, 101 Records is a store on Upper Grant in North Beach. Uh, that whole area of North Beach was where the Beat Poets are. Uh, this great uh, City Lights Books, Lawrence Ferlinghetti's bookstore. He just passed in the last couple of years. Great bars and restaurants. And I highly suggest Tosca. Um, it's gotten more upscale and gentrified, but it's one of the most beautiful bars in San Francisco and really delicious food. That's where Ron and I were drinking uh, martinis and we had dinner there. The cross around right next to it is Specs, another great old bar. Cross the street, Vesuvio's, a wonderful bar in Columbus. And it's right adjacent to Chinatown, too. But Upper Grant, uh, there is also Bar Grant and Green, and that famous uh, cross signs of Grant Green uh, that Jim Marshall photographed for the cover of the uh, Grant Green album, uh, Street, street of Dreams, on Blue Note Records. Uh, but this record store, is, you know, it's a little funky. I always find a couple of, of interesting things. They have new stuff. Um, they have tchotchkes in there, music-related tchotchkes. And same guy used to own a, a record store adjacent to it on, down on Vallejo Street that closed several years ago. So it's consolidated in a small shop. But worth checking out if you're up there. I probably wouldn't make a special trip to that store. But I love the cafes, Cafe Trieste, Cafe Puccini, um, Bohemian uh, Cigar Store, Washington Square, uh, all, I love walking around North Beach, and it's a great place for that, but here's what I picked up. Son to Champlin, a circle filled with love. This is when they were on Areola America, which was at the time a um, subdivision, I think, of Capitol Records, where it was picked up eventually by Capitol, and this is a, uh, they went through a period, I like their first album a lot, uh, the Lose Some Naturally, a San Francisco band, Sunday Champlin, Bill Champlin. I believe they're together again in some capacity touring. Uh, years later, Bill Champlin would go on to um, play with Chicago when it, during their MOR period, but at least he made some money, so all the power to him. This is produced by Keith Olsen, who uh, produced sort of that, the Fleetwood Mac White album, the 1975 album, uh, the debut with... Um, Buckingham and Nicks, and it's it's a, not a bad album. I I used to have it. It's ten bucks. I decided to pick it up. It's very clean copy inside, so I picked that there. This is a find that I love. I love this record. Um, it cost me twenty bucks, but this is a white label promo, clean as hell inside. Like a, it looks like it's never been played. Little uh, wear on the outside, but uh, 
John and Beverly Martin, John Martin, uh, great was it Scottish, I think, but British Scottish uh, folk, jazzy singer. They did a series of albums together. I already have a regular copy of this, a white label promo, of course, and I couldn't resist this because I love this album. And I love him. He was on, he went to Island Records later for his solo records, a psalm on a great double, triple bill, an island only bill at Winterland with John Martin, the band Free and Traffic in about 73, I believe. But this is a fantastic uh, folky uh, record uh, with his ex-wife wife at the time. I think they did two or three records together. I also got there this, Jimmy Smith at the Oregon, Lou Donaldson, Kenny Burrell, Donald Bailey, Art Blakey, Eddie McFadden, and Lou Donaldson. And this, the Blue Note label, is 25 bucks. This is a Japanese uh, Toshiba, Emi Toshiba uh, record. Um, my guess is f from the 80s, possibly. And it sounds really good. So uh, it's great. I think this was a great album. I like Jimmy Smith. I like soul, jazz, organ playing. And um, this sounded really great. I haven't played all these records yet. So that was my North Beach excursion. Then there's a store that's in that video. One of the most beautiful stores, Clean Wooden Lines. And that's with the jazz uh, rec music that was playing. And it's called Originals. This is on the corner of Fillmore and Hayes. Uh, in the Western Edition, up from Hayes Valley. And small store, really well curated. And there's a tip here. They have two really nice ultrasonic record cleaning machines. And for all their records they sell, they go through the uh, cleaning before they sell them. So uh, it's worth it what you're paying. They're in the sleeves as well. And they will clean your records for $2.50. I think that's a steal because, you know, I don't clean my records. So if I live there... The ones I really wanted to clean. And you can actually send them your records too and they'll clean them up um, and ship them back to you. But um, I recommend it. And I found some some rare records and some Rossiter records. Uh, if you saw on the wall, there was one record uh, I have here. But Originals, it's worth a visit. A tiny store, but a beautiful store. Now, this was one that was probably the rarest one I got. Mule Variations. Uh, I don't have this. I have it on CD. And I always love this record. Um, this is from 1998 and Auntie. It's a double uh, vinyl version of that CD. And uh, it's kind of, it's a bit of a rare find these days. You can find them, but it's not a cheap record. But I like this period of Tom Waits quite a bit. So that was a good one. Um, I did have a copy of this, but I, mine is a little uh, dirty and stuff. And this is a, um, a British edition on CBS of... John Cale's vintage vinyl. So this was a good find. I love this record, but I needed a cleaner copy. Uh, this is one that I have the CD in. This is a cut-notched promo copy of Kemper Van Beethoven's uh, Key Lime Pie. Love this record. Love Kemper Van De Beethoven and the subsequent band with David Lowry Cracker. Uh, again, this is one that I've had on Compact Disc since it came out. I love their run on Virgin Records quite a bit. Kemper Van Beethoven. Here's a Ross on Roland Kirk. You must read the back of this album. Natural Black Inventions, Root Strata. Um, this is one I had never heard. I did play it there. They let you play whatever they want. They'll, they'll put it on. They're really, really um, a good shop and really... Uh, just nice to the customers. Again, small, well curated, not a huge selection, all used. But um, every time I go there, when I visit San Francisco, I always find a handful of records. Uh, so this is from 1971, produced by Joel Dorn, uh, Atlantic Records. The multi reeded horn player, sax player. And um, an artist who I'm a big fan of is Illinois Jaquette. Uh, jazz artist. Uh, this is a wonderful record too. And this is Path of Marconi, a uh, French pressing, and it's still in shrink. And it's just, um, I, mean, I don't know the date on this. I didn't look at the curation, but it's on Aladdin and it's uh, super clean. I, I'm sure it's a later, it's a later edition of some sort. And I haven't looked it up, but I just, I just love this music. I, you know, I'm not a stickler for pressings. If I like it, I like the sound. 
that's where I'm going. I like a clean cover whenever possible. So Illinois Jaquette, a great jazz artist. Um, fantastic record. I know this music, so I haven't heard this particular one yet, but really nice. And then an OJC. Whenever I see OJCs, I at least consider them. Uh, still, uh, this one is... Let's see, this is Coltrane, uh, Bobby Jaspar, Idris Solomon, and Webster Young. OJC's uh, 80s into the 90s. Most of them are analog. Occasionally later, there's some... Uh, there's some... Um, digital transfers, but I'd say OJC, if you ever see them, and you had to get them for a decent deal. Uh, this wasn't cheap, this is 30 bucks, which is probably a little on the high side for some OJCs I found, although they're going up in price too. So, but I just, I love this music. I have a compact disc of this music. And this is a cut uh, copy. Obviously it was a promo copy, but um, this is Period of Prestige. I think this was in the 80s, this one, uh, and, but it's a fantastic record. So OJC stuff are, are highly uh, recommended. And then, of course, uh, some of you who are buying the Impulse Jazz Editions Acoustic Sound Series, uh, one of the most beautiful records recently is the uh, John Coltrane, Johnny Hartman record. So I haven't had this record. This is Johnny Hartman. This is the voice that is Johnny Hartman. Amazing, soothing jazz vocalist and this is on impulse the new wave is on jazz impulse but this is an earlier pressing i don't know exactly the dates but it's in really kind of pretty clean condition great jazz vocals now records didn't weren't sealed in the uk then so but when they're imported to the states there was a loose shrink wrap put on these things so uh i don't have this record and i know it um but King Crimson's Red, I just decided, I mean, I mean, I, if, when I'm in San Francisco, I had to get like a Bill Bruford record of some sort. And this seemed to be the one that was shouting, hey, Mazzy, get this Bill Bruford record. Yeah. Way out by Ocean Beach, way out the fog belt of San Francisco called uh, Tunnel Records. And, oh my God, what a great record store. I, I didn't, I should have spent more time there. I went with Jazz at Brooks who was a CD guy, he found some rare CDs, or at least some OJC CDs, because they had acquired what was left of the Orrin Keep News Jazz collection from his wife. He passed away a few years ago. He had sold his the really rare stuff because uh, he had health issues and had raised money for that. But he had a lot of OJC, a lot of other things, and there's some amazing jazz records in the store right now. So if you're in San Francisco, go out on Terravel, out by the Riptide Bar, across the street from the Riptide, great kind of bar music venue by Ocean Beach. Uh, there's some surf shops out there. Uh, there's a couple of uh, burrito and bars. And uh, it's kind of a cool little fog neighborhood where, all, where a lot of people have moved out with families because they can't afford... I mean, San Francisco even out there is not cheap, but it's cheaper than the rest of the city in the fog. But I did pick out uh, John Coltrane's Bahia, Bahia uh, which I didn't have. And this is on um, Prestige Records. I picked up this Cedar Walton first set. Uh, Jazz Shit Brooks made me buy this. They had both the first and second. This is a limited audiophile alto edition. And this is on Steeplechase Records. Cedar Walton Quartet. This is another OJC. Yep, this is original Jazz Classics. This is, again, from the um, Orn Keep News collection. And he had boxes and boxes of stuff, multi images, uh, multi copies. Not uh, this is obviously not original, but he was there when they were issuing, or you know, helped him out as they put the OJC's original jazz classic for CDs and vinyl together. This is Cannibal Adderley. Things are getting better with Milt Jackson. Love this uh, prestige uh, issue, OJC with the OJC OB. Fantasy Records picked up all those labels, Riverside Prestige, out of Berkeley. And then this, uh, this is Brooks made me buy, and the guy at the record store, the owner made me buy, because Brooks said, you got to get this, because it says the 1968 post-bop classic. This is a new reissue, and this is Members Don't Get Weary, Max Roach. And what a lineup uh, this is. This is Gary Bartz, Andy Bay, Stanley Cowell, 
Jaime Merritt and Charles Tolliver. And Tunnel Records, a cool store that every time I go there on now, I'm gonna visit it. Didn't know about it, and it's been there five years. No one told me about it. And then of course, everyone's gotta to go to Amoeba. Again, not great for you stuff. However, I did get some. You always find something, but it's not a, it's just a, a vast, there's so much stuff there. And you know, occasionally I get new stuff there, but I mean, I can get all the new stuff up here. So do I need to go there for new stuff? Uh, this is one that I really like. Um, I love Mose Allison. His kind of kind of jive vocals and his great piano playing. Uh, again, what a great, great singer. I advise to anyone to get the first uh, Mose Allison album. I believe that was on Riverside, I think, or Prestige, Riverside. Um, this is called Autumn Song, and it's um, Addison Farmer, Ronnie Free, and Mose Allison. And this was on Prestige Records, and uh, just a great, Great record. Struggle, Woody Guthrie. I'm all in on Woody Guthrie. Folkways Records. I collect this whole series. This is one I've never seen. This is his uh, Verve series that Polydor put out. And this these came out from 1976 to about 82. A lot of them, not all of them, most of them were mastered by Robert Ludwig back then. Most of them are two record sex. Most most are, are gatefolds. This is not. It's still a double record. This is the West Coast. This is Jerry Mulligan with Stan Getz and Paul Desmond. And there's a certain series with all these covers. And you got uh, Ella Fitzgerald and um, Charlie Parker. And, and just really a great series. And I think I have all 25 or 30, give or take. And this is one I've never seen. I think it's it goes on the end of the series, 1980. This one came out. Um but I love these records. They're usually pretty cheap. Well, this is 15 bucks. Usually they're between eight and $20, depending on, and I really think they're great. They're not that great audio file. It's a period of time, but they're really, really uh, wonderful records. And it's a great entry into jazz too, as well. And then lastly, this is a new one. Um, I got there. This is Lee Perry presents Megaton Dub 2. Outstanding album, every bit as good as volume one, some of his best work, recorded at Black Ark during his mid-1970s peak. Now, that's written by, this was one of the recommend, the recommendations of the, probably the reggae buyer at Amoeba, but um, I've heard a little bit of this, and I just loved it. And so, uh, you know, love this reggae dub stuff, and obviously Lee Scratch Perry is the king of, of, of it all. And I thought this was a cool one to check out. So that's what I got at Amoeba. And that's what I got at Tunnel. That's what I got at, at Originals. And that's what I got at 101. And that's the hats I got at Gorin Brothers. So hope you enjoy it. And uh, look forward to more. There's going to be some videos coming of records that have come in that people have sent me. And I will let you know if I get free records or things. There's a couple things that are coming in that people reached out to me. And I need to kind of audition first and... If I do that, I'll let you know, and I'll still give you my honest take on it. So thanks for watching again. Put your comments below. Mazzy loves almost all of you, except those trolls that you know who you are. That guy doesn't even put his real name.